All right, Thomas, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right, now as a futurist, what's your role in helping companies? Actually, my role is to help expand people's thinking about what the future holds. Um, you know, there's certain things about the, the future that we can predict with a high degree of probability. Like I can predict that this building that you're in right now is going to be there six months from now. I can predict that with a high degree of probability that the Earth's going to travel around the sun in roughly the same orbit even a hundred years from now. With a high degree of probability. Um, and, and there's there's enough stable elements so that we can even plan a birthday party two weeks out with knowing that we can control enough factors so that um, that uh, we can pull it off. But um, the things that we have the, the greatest problem predicting are things related to people and to um, uh, animals and weather. And so to the degree that we can get better at understanding those elements, then that gives us a huge advantage over in a, in a business world over our competition. Right. So let's talk about that. Why is it important to make predictions? Um, the predictions are a way of actually forcing somebody to think about a time and place in the future. It actually, um, if you set the stage right, it forces people to, to get their mind wrapped around the situation and then to form their own, their own conclusions. The, the prediction itself, uh, a lot of predictions are going to be a little off this way or that way or, or just totally wrong. Um, but it does force people to think about a time and place in the future. And we don't spend enough time thinking about the future. I spend a lot of time thinking about the future. But let's, let's drill down into this deeper. What are some of the emerging technologies that we should be paying attention to you know, in micro industries? Um, there's the, the, I tend to focus on what I refer to as the disruptive eight. And these are eight technologies that are going to expand over the, the coming decades and touch the lives of virtually every person on planet Earth. Um, these include sensor technology, the Internet of Things, 3D printing, uh, driverless technology, uh, drones, um, uh, mixed reality, that's virtual reality, and augmented reality, and then artificial intelligence. And I think I skipped one along the way there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I can. T those are those are all big ones. Um, I'm, me, I'm working with artificial intelligence right now, and trying to to work that into predicting patterns for what I can do with my moving target, which is always the appeal of the audience. What is their appetite going to say next? So, if you have some, for instances, that you want to bring up, please bring them up. Yeah, with artificial intelligence, we're we're not really at. Um, artificial intelligence. We're more at a stage of augmented intelligence. Uh, we're really good at doing pattern recognition and, and, um, and, and kind of uh, predictive analysis and, and data analytics and that sort of thing. But um, the actual intelligence, or the artificial intelligence part there, we're still not there. Um, that'll, that'll come later. But uh, yeah, with all of these things, uh, I have to remind people that the cars that we drive today have uh, been in development for 120 years. Uh, so it's taken 120 years to get to a vehicle that's this good. Um, so with all of this emerging technology, we still have to work our way through the crappy stages. We have to go through a lot of crappy stages of uh, early tech to get to the good stuff. And so in a lot of areas, we're still not there yet. Why are you limiting um, your thinking to the, just the eight technologies? Um, I, I don't limit my thinking just to those eight technologies. I tend to focus on those because um, they tend to extend far out into the marketplace, and it gives me a good framework for uh, kind of understanding some of the other ones as well. Um, but there are a uh, tremendous number of new technologies coming along. Um, I tend to focus on the ones that are getting the most traction, and these eight tend to be getting a lot of traction. Tell me about your thoughts for, say, how the world's going to change over the next 20 years from now. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> um, 
I mean, just if we if we think about driverless technology, which I, I think is going to be the most disruptive technology in all history. I think it'll be more disruptive than the invention of the wheel, the invention of electricity, or the invention of the car itself, because it will affect more people in a greater way than any other technology in history. Um, now, there, there might be some arguments that artificial intelligence will change it more than that, but um, we'll, we'll see. But um, uh, the driverless technology, imagine 10 years from now, stepping out in front of your house, you pull out your phone, you punch in, I want to go to work, I want to go to school, I want to go shopping. A driverless vehicle comes and picks you up, takes you to where you want to go, and from there, picks somebody else up and takes them to where they want to go. Uh, suddenly we transition from this just-in-case mindset, I have a car in my garage just in case I need to go somewhere, to this just-in-time mindset. I can summon a vehicle at any time that I need it. And this doesn't have to just be with cars. I mean, uh, if I need a tool to do some work, I need a drill to do some construction work, I can summon this drill. I can have a drone that flies a drill to me and I can use it for the next half hour and then send it back. Yeah, a lot of people are going to convert their garage into Airbnb rentals, that sort of thing. Uh, I, 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 the tow truck industry will start going away, car washes will go away. Um, I mean, we'll still need a lot of these services, but, but they'll be B2B services. They won't be customer facing services. So. Um, and it, it will affect cities in such a huge way, just how we design buildings, how we design traffic uh, systems, uh, all of that starts shifting and changing. Tell me, t let, me, let me get into conversations here. Um, give us some examples, either the positive or the negatives, of how you see the cities or, say, society in general is going to be changed uh, as we go forward in the future. I mean, you mentioned a couple of particulars, but I'd like to get some summation there. Well, let's let's take for example, if you no longer need to own a car, um, then the cars then will be owned by fleet services. And these, these people who own these fleets of vehicles, and that'll be a very profitable industry, but the, the people that own the fleets of vehicles will want to buy their cars in the least expensive way possible. And cities right now are bringing in somewhere between 20 and 40 percent of their uh, annual income from the the sale of cars, uh, the sales tax related to car sales. Uh, that's that's a huge number, and so if if I could if I owned a fleet of cars, I would want to go to the state that I can get the cars the cheapest, where I can pay the least amount of sales tax or no sales tax, and and do it in a way where um, that. Uh, I don't have to cover all those costs. Now, cities have ways of making up for that lost revenue, but uh, so far they haven't got their mind wrapped around uh, uh, that situation yet. And, and the, um, the, the gas tax will start to dwindle and go away. Um, airports, 41% um, of the revenue for the average airport comes from parking and transportation services. And um, all of that will start to dwindle and go away over the next two to three decades. So uh, this, these are dramatic changes uh, monetarily for cities. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the cities, 80% of the police force is dedicated to traffic control. We just won't need that many people out controlling the traffic anymore. All the traffic courts, the traffic cops, the traffic tickets, all of that thing, uh, that bad karma uh, starts to go away. I can't wait for that to happen. But <laughs> <laughs> Me either. All right, Th <laughs> Thomas, it, it's, it's been great having you on the show. I really appreciate you popping in here and giving us your, um, your view of the future. Sure. Sure. Well, thanks for having me on. And... Uh, uh, anytime, give me a call and let's do it again. We will. Are right, you been watching CEO Money with Michael?